You might remember about 100,000 years ago, we did a lesson where we kind of manually put commas into a number and we put uh, two points on the decimal point. Now we had to write this, um, this fairly ugly kind of algorithm to do this. You can see we've got all sorts of ugly things going on here. And I thought the first thing we could do with the standard template library was to not have to write something quite as ugly as this in order to be able to get commas into a number that starts off like this. So how can we do that? Well, what we'll do is our usual trick. We will abolish all of this code. Okay, it's all gone. Um, we're going to use the standard template library in order to put commas and set precisions for a particular numbers. So, so let's have a let's have a quick crack at that. I just better put this in main program. Now we need to inc include a few um, a few libraries here because we I haven't really been telling you actually, but a lot of the time we've actually been using the um, standard template library with things like strings and things. But uh, let's not go there, eh? been talking to you on a need-to-know basis. So we're going to talk about a new thing called locale. And locale, sort of part of the standard template library, gives you gives you the ability to, to do things in your area. So if you know if you're in the English speaking world, you'll be putting a comma after three numbers. If you're in the Japanese speaking world, you'll be putting a comma after four numbers. Um, if you're in the more European world, you'll be putting a dot after three numbers. But well, whatever your local area is, now most locales are what we call the C locale, which is the kind of English, um, I dare hate to say it, but English American world. But we can change that around. Anyway, I'm going to let you look that up on um, Wikipedia. It's fairly simple to, you know, you put in things like in US, that will give you the US. Uh, if you put in that, that will give you Germany and so on. But I'll let you look that up on the internet. Okay, we need the usual the usual suspect, which is um, IO stream, and we also need one new one that we've not seen before. Again, all part of the kind of standard li template libraries and standard set of things, and that's going to be um, SS stream. That's going to help us with our putting commas in, without them to write that code that we saw at the start of this lesson. Usual. Uh, I don't think I've ever written a program without this. I'm, I'm sure people do, but I no, never have. Okay, now we know about inheritance. Uh, there's a special thing in the... Uh, there is a special... You can see it's a template. There's a special part of the standard library. And we just saw it there. It's got the bits and pieces there, which is a template, which, which takes some kind of a character, but it doesn't necessarily have to be um, a character. But we're going to insist that, yes, we are going to use a character, and we're going to inherit from it and create our own version of it. So, we saw this in the inheritance module. I'm going to create a new numpunct, or number punctuation, um, inherited kind of class and I'm going to inherit and I'm going to piggyback upon the basic template one which and I'm going to tell it that I'm going to be sending chars into it. That's what I'm doing there if you remember from the last lesson. Okay now a word I haven't mentioned before is protected. A protected we, so far we've seen public and we've seen private. We haven't seen protected before. Public is with this class, anyone can get at it. Private is only the class can get at it. Protected is only the class and things which inherit from it can get hold of it. So it's public is a public area outside somebody's house. Private is somebody's bedroom. And protected is somebody's kind of front porch. You know, you can go onto it, but only if you're invited, only if you're welcome. So it's kind of a bit like that. So there's, there's the road outside the house, there's the porch of the house, and there's the bedroom. Anyway, don't worry too much about it. But what we're going to do is we're going to override a couple of functions which are in numpunct, which are protected. And we're going to override them um, with this new class and create our own. 
put a semicolon there while we're here. Okay, the first one is called do thousands sep. So this is basically saying where where do you put separators into your big numbers? I mean normally we in the English tradition you'd put them after three three numbers, but we're going to override the numpunct version of this to create our own to create our own version. Now I'll tell you what virtual and constant mean in a second, but I'm going to return a comma a char, a char. So the template, I'm going to tell it I'm going to use a char, and here it is, char. And that's the character, comma. Now you could put anything there, but I'm going to put a comma. Now what does um, constant mean? Constant means that this subroutine will not change any of the um, of the objects, bits and pieces. All it's doing is returning a string. It, it's, 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 you know, it's not changing any of the uh, underlying object. It's just returning. It's not, it's ch not changing any member variables. It's just returning a comma. That's all it's doing. Virtual. Oh, again, I wouldn't worry too much about this. If you have many, many things inheriting, this could be inheriting from something. This is inheriting from numpunct. Then what virtual will do is say, return the last one of these derived. So if there's a do thousand separator derived in here, and there's also a do thousand sep subroutine derived into something that's even you know even higher, more of a base class. Then what virtual does is say, use the last one derived. So there could be loads of these um, do thousand sep subroutines, but virtual says just get the last one, the last one that's derived. Don't go to the base, don't go to the top of the Christmas tree. Go to the bottom of the Christmas tree. So const, don't change anything in the object virtual, use the last one derived in the last class derived, the latest and the greatest. Um, we're also going to do another, I'm going to override another function which is in num, public numpunct, and that's um, a string called do grouping. Again, I'm not going to change the object, so put const, and I'm going to return Zero, zero, 003. So basically every three characters, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, I will uh, put the comma in. If I, now if I made that a four, more the kind of Japanese yen kind of thing, then that would be four. But I'm going to make it three. <coughs> so that will uh, eventually make this three there. Anyway, I've got to get rid of this because this has to be a char. Hopefully that's making a bit of sense. Now, now that we've overridden um, this template class, standard template class with our own version, and we're going to use chars, let's now write a little template class again from the last lesson. This is all familiar now. And we're going to be proper C++ program, so we're going to use T. I'm going to create an, my own function, um, and the format with commas. T, ooh, have we seen that before? Have we seen that T before? Because we don't know if we're going to be sending in here floats, doubles, integers, longs, shorts, we just don't know. So this is going to, every time it sees a new kind of number, it's going to recreate a function which is going to Take in a flow to double and into long, whatever. Okay, here's our new thing SS, um, SS stream, just string stream, just for a stream of characters. Don't worry too much about this. So, string stream SS. Now, this is where we need the, um, oh, by the way, numpunk comes out of locale because, look, you know, how we punctuate our numbers is part of where we live, isn't it? So, we're going to create a new locale, and I'm going to call it comma locale. Now this takes two parameters. The first thing it takes is whatever locale we're in, and I don't actually care because I'm going to make it a comma after three characters, regardless of where we are. But you know, you could have all sorts of things in here. Um, but I don't actually care because I'm going to force it to be commas every three characters. Uh, the other thing it takes is it needs to know the number punctuation. This is so I'm going to squeeze all of this in 
to this new object by calling a new version of this class, which is inheriting from this class. There we are. So I'm going to create a new standard template library um, class thing. And there's the object name. It takes two parameters, the current locale and how I'm going to punctuate my numbers. And I've derived that from the standard way of punctuating numbers and used a template definition there. I'm going to be using a char, not something else. And remember that I'm going to be able to take in longs, ints, doubles, floats, shorts, or whatever, because they're all going to be turned into T. Super. Right, a few more bits and pieces required here. I now need to imbue my output streams with this locale I just created. Just to make this even plainer, we'll call this Andy, comma, lock. Just to make you realise it's something I've just created myself. So I've created a new locale. I've called it Andy, comma, locale. I've overridden this um, template function class, sorry. Um, and I've added these, I've overridden these two methods with whatever I want to do. Okay, now, so we're going to take in a number, that could be any number, could be, you know, one, two, three, four, point nine, four, five, whatever. So value could be anything coming in. And I'm now going to set the precision on that to two, because I want to have two decimal points. And I'm going to make that fixed. We've seen all this before, and then I'm going to put my value there. So that's my value there. Float, long, double, whatever. And I'm going to return a string. And this is going to have the commas in it. And why is it going to have the commas in it? Because my SS string stream has been imbued with this way of dealing with number punctuation. Okay, I think we're there. Almost there. Imagine if I'd done this a few lessons ago before we did all that class inheritance and template stuff. Okay, so that's all my template work done. So there's a, there's a templatey thing there. In, there's an inheriti, inheriting thing there. There's some overriding stuff going on there. Here's a templatey functiony thing here. Here's a template value coming in. Here's me using standard template library things like streaming and locales and now we're going to actually use all of this so let's get onto it then let's set up um, variable uh, let's make it that and let's print this out let's see what happens so see out um, int, and we'll do Andy's format with commas, there, there's Andy's format with commas, there we are, t value, see, template value, it's going to be an int, it's going to be an int, there we go, and then we have end line, and then we'll have return zero, so, fingers crossed, Press the run button. Lovely. We've got a comma in it there. Again, what I'll do is I'll just change this to four. If you need four for your, for your yen or whatever, then you get four. But I like three. I can read three, I can't read fours. And if you can, if you want to change this to um, whatever you want, you'll get whatever you want. Again, inheriting from this, creating our own class, which is inherited, overriding two methods, um, and then building our own locale with our new way of writing out numbers. So the beauty of template, of course, is that I can also use Andy format with commas with floats. So let's put a float in, not a flat float. 
make this 32,235.47980, whatever. And now we shall output this with a float rather than an int. Let's just line this up. There we are. Let's give it a go. See what happens. Super. So you can see it's rounded 479 to 48. And we've got the comma in that position there. <coughs> Apologies for the coughing. It's winter here in England. Right. Um, let's just do all this with uh, longs and doubles to see if it works for those two. So, so this is going to be a long, a long. So nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Long. A long. Come these two lines out. Actually, let's just do them while we're here. So this is going to be double. Ah, double. Get rid of this. So what's this going to be? Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Stick that in there. And we'll just write double there. Let's line all these up. Nice and neat. So the neatness police don't get me. So we've got four different Andy format with commas, which is a template function. It can take four different kinds of thing, but I've only had to write it out once and toes crossed, fingers crossed, everything crossed. There we go. So everything's formatted with commas and the float and the double are rounded to the appropriate value. Let's just make sure we this kind of rounds up to 1.3. Is that going to round up? There we go. So that's 126 has rounded up to 13, which is what we want typically. So I think we're there. And you might agree that this although it's a bit fiddly conceptually, is a bit neater than it was before when we had to kind of handcraft this by hand using our own mad, mad algorithm. So there we go. Template, standard template library, overriding. I think we've got everything. So until next time, I'll see you again.